Almighty God, today a military sea lift ship is named in honor of a soldier, Corporal Charles L. Gilliland, who gave his life in the service of his country. It is fitting that this ship will carry his name, and it is fitting that the, the naming ceremony occurs during Memorial Day weekend. A day set aside to honor the memory of our fallen war heroes. Now I know we live in a time when heroes are baseball players and basketball players and other sports heroes. But the true heroes of America are Medal of Honor winners, just like Colonel Barfoot, Mr. Wetzel, and the name for whom the ship in front of you, Charles Gilliland. As a young Army soldier, he gave up his life for our country. It was 1951, during the heat of the Korean War, and he was 17 years old. And on this day, if he were alive, this very day, he would be celebrating his 64th birthday. In the Newport News Shipbuilding, we're proud to be a part of this memorial to a hero, producing this ship and honoring the soldier from Arkansas for whom it's named. And only at 17, he had already turned his back on boyhood and embraced the life of a soldier. He showed through his actions, much as another member of this division, Audie Murphy, did during World War II, that age is irrelevant when it comes to combat. Only your commitment and actions count. Charles Gilliland's actions counted that night as he stood his ground to serve his, to save his fellow soldiers. If it wasn't for this young man, Charles Gilliland, I wouldn't be standing here today. The Chinese would have completely overrun our positions and we would all have been dead or prisoners or killed. Uh, he was a great soldier. He protected us. He, left, he lost his life. I just want to say in closing, I don't want to keep you out here in the sun too long, but Lawrence Chamberlain got the Congressional Medal of Honor in, during the Civil War, and he lived a full life. Sergeant Alvin York got the Congressional Medal of Honor in World War I, and Sergeant York lived a full life. Audie Murphy received the Congressional Medal of Honor in World War II, along with Jake Lindsay and Sergeant Ross, and I know a lot of those people. You've been in the Army 20 years, you run into a lot of Medal of Honor recipients, but the ones you run into live. But Charles Gillen paid a supreme sacrifice. He, he gave his life. Thank you. The military has articulately and lucidly described heroism as above and beyond the call of duty. Gallantry, courage, endurance, and bravery are all apt descriptions of the magnificent action of Charles Gilliland in April of 1951. But heroes are human beings. They have families. They are sons, brothers, uncles, cousins. And to this family, our hero is many other things also. He is a son who cared deeply about his own dad's spiritual salvation, even as he himself was in peril on the battlefield. He is a son who lovingly reassured his mother to ease her worries and fears about her soldier son. He is a brother who fought so that his younger brothers would never have to know the horrors and the terrors of a war. He is a son who gave back a bike as a little boy because he realized it had been purchased in the wrong way and there was a rightful owner there. He is a brother 
that gentle and loving sisters remember with tears after almost 50 years. Charles is a family member who brought together those of us from all over the country to once again see and know and love and acknowledge one another. Charles Gilliland never came home. But when we all go to our final home, we know he will be there to greet us. I think it's particularly fitting, as we've heard before, that we have this ceremony on this Memorial Day weekend. For it's the perfect occasion to honor a truly great American military hero. We've heard from every speaker, truly from the heart, what Charles did for them personally and what he did for the nation. This ship's mission is to provide frontline support of our deployed troops to be always ready, to be unfailingly reliable, and to be prepared for the second and the third phase of any operation that she'll be called upon to do. Isn't this fitting? Because this is exactly the performance of Corporal Charles Gilliland that we have read about and heard about this morning. That's what he did in his test under fire. It's a real privilege and a real pleasure for me to represent the United States Navy here today as we add this incredibly powerful and capable ships to the role of the Military Sealift Command. From the ways of this great shipyard have risen a lot of great ships. From the legendary aircraft carriers of World War II to the famous passenger liners of the 1950s to the nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers that are the backbone of today's Navy. USNS Gilliland joins that proud heritage today and becomes a key factor in keeping peace in the world. When filled with our Army teammates, combat equipment, and stationed near some potential trouble spot, the Gilliland will send a powerful message to any potential to adversary. That message goes something like this. Hey, you, heads up. If you break the rules of international behavior, the full power of the United States will rain down upon you. This ship, with its size and its magnificent capabilities, will be a force to be reckoned with. Our nation has come to expect great things from this yard, and I know the quality product that we have here today will be no exception. On this Memorial Day weekend, as we name the USNS Gilliland, we particularly remember, as patriotic Americans, what the military service of Corporal Charles L. Gilliland means to our nation. We remember the 54,246 Americans who lost their lives serving their country in the Korean War. And we remember all the other military members who have served so nobly and heroically to secure the peace and protect the liberty and freedom of our nation. May God bless this ship and all who sail in her. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Congressman Pickett. And now what we've all been waiting for. It's time to christen the Gilliland. But first, if our sponsor, Mrs. Dale Shelton, and our Matron of Honor, Mrs. Pauline Mears, would join me at the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor and a Matron of Honor. Dale Shelton is a sister of Corporal Gilliland. She was born in California, the only member of the Gilliland family not born in Arkansas. But her family soon returned to Arkansas where she attended school. A senior cashier at a supermarket, Dale also plays drums in a country and western band with her husband, Verl. She's an avid community volunteer with a personal goal of helping at least one person in need 
every week by baking or cooking meals for them. She's also active in her church, and Dale has two children and one grandchild. Please welcome our sponsor, Mrs. Dale Shelton. Our matron of honor today is Mrs. Pauline Mears, another of Corporal Gilliland's sisters and a native of Baxter County, Arkansas. She worked in the banking industry for 29 years and is a member of the Ozark Mountain Bank, Bank Women Association and the president of the local Lions Club. Like her sister Pauline, she is active in the community and is past officer of the local Chamber of Commerce. She is married to Mr. Cecil Mears and they have two sons, enjoy spending time with their grandchildren. Please welcome Mrs. Pauline Mears. And now without further delay, if the ladies would join me for the christening. in the United States naval ship Killalan. First up is an M915 tractor trailer. This is a typical tractor trailer flatbed. The length is about 40 feet. The driver is Specialist Charles Kovaluski. Next up is an M931 five-ton tractor, typical of a small tractor with a length of about 22 feet. It has central tire inflating system to inflate and deflate the tires on the move. The driver is Specialist Robert Butler. Next up, an M923 five-ton cargo truck with a drop-side cargo truck similar to the yard set green cargo trucks. About 25 feet in length, the driver is specialist Jerry Everett. The next vehicle, an M915 recovery vehicle. Used as a wrecker for vehicles under 10 tons, has an overall length of about 25 feet, and the driver is specialist Eric Escobedo. And finally, the Humvee. This is the oldest version of the Hummer. The driver is specialist Chad Parkinson. would have been so proud of this ship that bears his name, that stands ready to serve and defend the country he loved and died for. 
And he would say to all the brave men and women who were a part of that war, this is your day too. To Charles' family and to his beloved mother, had she lived to see this day, the USNS Gilliland is a healing bridge that spans the canyon of time. It enables us to reach back in time to the early morning hours of April 25th, 1951, to bend down to that young man lying wounded, to gather him in our arms and say, you have fought the good fight and you have given all you have to give. You can rest now, Charles, you're home. To the captain and crew of the USNS Gilliland, our prayer for you is from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you.